I'm Terry Schwartz. I'm the Interim Dean in the School of Public Affairs. And it's my pleasure to welcome you for this 50, um, 50th anniversary event. Um, tonight, the School of Public Affairs is celebrating 50 years of campus community partnership in the Pikes Peak region. The UCCS Campus Community Partnership Reception, our event tonight, and thank you again for being here, is an opportunity to recognize and thank organizations that collaborate with UCCS on internships, research opportunities, and service learning um, projects, all of which are extremely important to our school and to the campus as a whole. Just a little bit of background before I turn it over to some speakers that are going to highlight some partnerships. In 1965, our community demanded a university to support and provide educational opportunities for the growth in our community. From this vision came the birth of the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Now celebrating 50 years of service, UCCS is a prominent member of the community and a vital educational and economic force in the Pikes Peak region. For the past 50 years, UCCS has partnered with community organizations to provide educational development for our students, public services for our community, and research opportunities for our faculty and staff. In the early 1970s, what was then the Graduate School of Public Affairs came to UCCS with the Master of Public Administration degree. As a public service degree, we immediately engaged in community partnerships that have continued over the decades. In 1995, we added the Master of Criminal Justice degree, um, hosted here and granted by Denver, and in 2007, the Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice. With the addition of the undergraduate degree, we um, became the School of Public Affairs. Throughout this time, we have promoted our mission to improve the quality of life for people in their communities, here and abroad, through collaborative governance, public service innovation, community engagement, and research. Our students frequently praise the opportunities they have to work in the community settings, and this would not be possible without our valued partners, many of whom are here tonight, and we thank you for that on behalf of our students. UCCS and the community have trans transformed the region by developing educational opportunities, economic development, enhanced cultural awareness, and promotion of a greater quality of life for the Pikes Peak region. You've probably noticed there's a lot of growth on the campus, including student enrollment growth. From the humble beginnings of a small campus, UCCS has become a state-of-the-art university that shares our researches, resources with a world-class community. To celebrate some of those partners, we'd like to ask some of our faculty to provide a brief presentation of a sample of our community partnerships. So I will um, let you know who will come up in order and they're on their own to get themselves up here in the appropriate order. So that's their test. Um, our first speaker is Dr. Katie Kalkinen. She will be followed by Dr. Don Klingner, then Dr. Barbara Joyce, our um, colleague from the Bethel College of Nursing and Health Sciences that has a new long name that she can tell you if she wants to. And um, fourth will be Dr. Anna Kozlowski. So please welcome Dr. Kalkinen. Thank you uh, for coming tonight. I, I decided I'll talk about two projects that I'm working on and then discuss the collaborators that work with, uh, with those projects. So back in 2010, the campus was awarded a grant from the Office of Violence Against Women. It was a half a million dollar grant and we were lucky enough to be refunded in 2014 with an additional $580,000 to do primary violence prevention education on the campus. We also do training of law enforcement officers. We've helped to uh, facilitate the overhaul of judicial affairs practices and develop a coordinated community response team on the campus. In terms of our community collaborators in this project, this has included uh, Tessa, the domestic violence and sexual assault provider. They have been instrumental in helping us with a variety of things. Early on, they attended some of our trainings um, that we, we go to as part of this grant. Uh, CSPD, uh, Colorado Springs Police Department, and El Paso County Sheriff's Department are also MOU uh, collaborators on this project. We're hoping that one of them will come with us to a training we'll be doing in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll be training, learning how to train law enforcement officers to respond to student victims. 
We also have collaborated with Planned Parenthood and really have tried to integrate our discussion of healthy relationships with reproductive health. And so that is a little sample of what we're doing in terms of on the campus with violence prevention. I also hold a contract with the Department of Corrections and recently uh, adult parole. And right now, none of those folks are here because they all are under a legislative deadline and even the director is entering data right now. But I just want to say, not the director of correction, I mean the director of policy and analysis is entering data. I can't imagine the director. And so we're really excited about that partnership. Um, that partnership started uh, almost 20 years ago with Dr. Kelly Klebe in psychology, and she held that contract up until last uh, July 1 of 14. And when we took that contract over, uh, there was new leadership at DOC as well that is very excited about faculty being engaged in research, and in particular research around the evaluation of interventions within prisons that prepare offenders for reentry into the community. And then more recently, another smaller contract with parole where we're looking at success of parole and community inmates uh, and their ability to succeed uh, in the community. And so we're really excited uh, to continue those partnerships uh, with the campus. So. I hope that Terry Schwartz remembers that in order to do this correctly, we not only have to get up, walk up to the podium, but we have to remember which order we're supposed to be in. And I trust I'll get credit for immediately coming up after Katie Kalkinen without having to be reminded. But I do start with a story. In 1969, when I started working for the federal government, I went to a Toastmasters lunch in suburban Washington, D.C. And there was this guy, Philip Klutz, C-L-U-T-T-S. He was at a podium very much like this, and as many people do at Toastmasters meetings, he held it with a death grip. And he said, hello, my name's Philip Klutz. And at that point, the whole podium fell forward off the stage onto the first two tables. And that was the end of his presentation. <laughs> I'm not going to make that same mistake, because there are no tables in front. <laughs> what I'd like to do is to talk about two things briefly. One of them is capstone projects. All graduate students, be they in the Masters of Public Administration or the Master of Science in Criminal Justice degree programs, need to complete what we call a capstone. And what it is is a community-based research project that involves a sponsoring agency and a faculty subject matter expert. And since I'm just now grading all of the papers for that one, it's at the top of my mind so I can talk about it. We have projects with TESA, with Colorado Springs Police Department, and with El Paso County Sheriff's Department, and a number of other nonprofit organizations in the area. And what these projects do is to give our students practice in the real world of research, which includes politics with a small p, how to work with a variety of different interests, which have different objectives and different perspectives, and do so in completing original research that involves the collection of original data under the auspices of our universities. IRB, Institutional Review Board. So they get quite a lot of practice in the real world and how it works. And that would not be possible without the cooperation and support of the client agencies that offer us an opportunity to do field work with them. It's a good deal for the students because they find out what it's like to do real research. It's a good deal for the university because it's an example of how we transform lives, working with our community, not as an ivory tower, but as an arena for civic engagement that's connected to everything that we do. As a second example of this, we did a, an international symposium last week 
that involves the cooperation of U.S. Northern Command, the Mexican Consul General in Denver, the Office of the Governor, particularly the Governor's Director of Economic Development and International Trade, and a number of other community-based organizations. We had four international scholars visiting us. Two of them stayed with me for a week, but that's another story. And the end result of this was something that everybody thought went well. I'll leave the judgment up to them because I was under sleep deprivation at the time and my judgment is probably not reliable. But I'll take their word for it. And we could not do these things without your support because as a university, we live and die with our community. And we're betting on Colorado Springs just as you're betting on us. So thank you for being here and thank you for helping us celebrate. Bringing one of my partners with me, Brian Cates, who uh, is gonna help me hold up the podium so I don't fall over. But I am Barbara Joyce and I am from the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. And um, I'm glad to be a part of this um, partnership and have um, actually worked with the School of um, Public Affairs in multiple ways in, in the past. But what I currently do is teach community health, public health nursing. And I've been teaching it for over 20 years. And I have been really working with community centers in Colorado Springs. And we have four community centers, which are in really underserved areas um, of our community. And they provide a wealth of opportunity for students in, um, in, in, when our client is the community. They have preschools, they have after school programs, they have adolescent programs in the evenings, and they have elderly programs at lunch. So we have been doing service learning for a long time, which I now look back and think that they're just really random acts of kindness. Because random meaning that we go in when we need to go in as faculty and deliver some services and projects. And acts of kindness meaning they love us, they want us back, they want more of us. And but so in 2010, we really changed the way we looked at our service learning projects. And Brian and I started um, talking about it. 2010, that was the social economic downturn in Colorado Springs when they turned off our lights and cut our bus routes, and they also considered cutting the community centers. So we got together and developed a, a MOU to work with the city and UCCS um, to really work together and partner. And our first feat was to um, get a national award from CDC that took the four, four leaders to Atlanta to learn how to work together and to partner and to collaborate. And that sometimes, as you mentioned, isn't the easiest thing to do when there's probably different languages, and I'm talking about just the language of park and rec and public health. Um, language, different organizational structures, different physical agents, and really learning to work together. And we work, use some models. Um, the first one is the collaboration multiplier, which we just sat down and talked with each other about what we had in common and how, what could be our mission and how we could work together. So develop, we've also used um, um, the uh, multi-sector collaboration and building community capacity. Um, the first thing is that planning a, a vision and a mission and using a logic model to guide wh what we do. Um, we developed, we identified in our logic model two areas of interest that we wanted to focus on and chose evidence-based practice programs um, such as um, childhood obesity and tobacco education and we're really focusing all our service learning projects in those two areas. We built a communication structure in which there's a team of five leaders um, that represent um, um, healthcare, which Kaiser Permanente, El Paso County Department of Health, who's here today, um, the city and myself, and Live Well Colorado. And we meet qu quarterly 
And then we have a partner team of about 15 to 20 organizations that meet monthly and work together on our goals and our projects. We, we um, the uh, evidence-based practice programs that we're implementing are Let's Go 5210, which is um, uh, five fruits and vegetables a day, two hours or less of screen time, one hour of physical activity, and zero sugary drinks. I'm surprised I got that all right. Um, uh, <laughs> and and we, everything we do is around that. So childhood obesity was the main thing. And then we also, the third piece of uh, collaboration is uh, identifying a standard measured or a common um, measures for evaluation. And we've chosen the Omaha system, which looks at knowledge, behavior, and status. So we each time we do something, we measure their knowledge, we measure change in behavior, and we measure their status, health status in terms of um, height and weight. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing right now. We have successful outcomes. In the last two years alone, we have received $250,000 of grants for the community centers. Um, so we're we're putting the money back into our programs. The, the latest one you might have heard about was um, on the news, just was that Monday, the NFL program. I'm going to let Brian talk a little bit more. And um, also, we've really, really been focused on um, the, um, identifying our city as a heal community, which is um, healthy eating, active living, and it's a national category. So we went to city council and got approval for that, and we're trying to move all of our efforts from the silver status to a gold status for our community. And Brian, do you want to add anything to a little bit about more about the NFL thing? And Real briefly, and, and mainly I just want to say thank you as a community member. I'm not a professor here on campus, so we were thanked uh, being community members. I want to thank the university uh, we at the community centers could not have done what we've done uh, without the support from the academic community. And I think it's very fitting we're here on a Wednesday night in the middle of what I was told is a palindrome week where we're at 51315, Monday through Friday this week. It's the same forward and backward. And I think that's very symbolic because the academic community supports us we the community support the academic community. It works both ways. And one example is that NFL Play 60. Uh, there were 12 NFL cities, Denver being one, that was afforded the opportunity to apply for that program. And you may have seen the commercials of kids outdoors and active for 60 minutes or more a day. And Colorado Springs was chosen of one of 12 national places. And the real reason that the NFL chose us in Colorado Springs was the community engagement through the partnership model. It wasn't just an agency involved with kids and getting them outdoors and maybe going a little bit further and feeding them healthy snacks or maybe a little further and having a strong network with the school district. It was getting academia down to get some uh, you know, quantitative data, which we uh, really didn't have, to incorporate evidence-based research to really show that this isn't just fun and games. It is fun and it is games and recreation, but we're dealing with public safety, we're dealing with public health, we're dealing with uh, a lot of these critical issues, mental health issues, and, and more importantly than anything else, building hope and providing access and opportunity to mainly underserved parts of town. So it's happening, it's only happening because of the collaborative framework and uh, we are deeply grateful for the uh, UCCS community and their involvement. I think I had the furthest to walk. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to take a few moments to recognize the partners, or a few of the many partners, uh, that help with our vibrant engagement and service learning program within the BACJ, BACJ program at UCCS. The Colorado Springs Police Department uh, including all the officers, detectives, sergeants, and victim advocates that will serve our community tirelessly, but when called upon, will take students on ride-alongs, will come to class and give talks, uh, will sit on panels, uh, and be at all of our engagement events. The Colorado Springs Police Department Planning and Grants Administration Office that supervises many of our capstone and theses, 
that helps students with the IRB process, um, with getting very active um, projects within the community completed, uh, sitting at their capstone presentations and being second readers. Homeland Security investigations who make the time in their busy schedules to come talk to our students, participate in events, uh, and take interns uh, into their office, giving them network opportunities. The El Paso County Sheriff's Office, who has taken many of our students on tours of the jail, which I'm sure their parents love, uh, <laughs> and also the dispatch unit um, within their office downtown. We have many nonprofit organizations that work tirelessly to provide our students with very hands-on experiences. Uh, and one that I would like to highlight today is the Human, Traf Human Trafficking Task Force of Southern Colorado, represented uh, by Rebecca Burroughs. And I want to extend a sincere thank you for the work that you have allowed our honor students to do with the symposiums in the past two years, for our students to participate in service learning uh, by coming to task force meetings, by helping pack survivor bags, um, by hanging flyers in town, raising awareness, uh, and having a very meaningful and applied opportunity to take what they're learning in the classroom and see it in action. So I thank all of the organizations that have had a direct impact on motivating our students to improve the quality of public life embrace creative problem solving, and meet societal challenges with compassion. Thank you.